there's there's this idea that like women who do gangbangs or do these like cra- crazy scenes are kind of being forced into it or it's something that they're doing just for the money and they don't really want to do it. And I'm always like, if you've ever seen like Adriana perform, like that girl wants to be there. Yeah. Like it is very much like her show and she's into it. So like, what do you think it is about those scenes that you enjoy so much? Uh, it's the power. It's, it's the, so you feel empowered. Around. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel, I feel empowered. And then also like, it's really hot to control a bunch of men. Like, you know, I'm in a situation not only where I'm empowered because everybody's worshiping me. Um, and then collectively you have a whole room of people collectively, including the director and everyone that's helping the scene that want you to have a good time, that want you to feel good. So as you're feeling good, they're kind of all cheering you on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just like kind of commanding guys. Like I like yelling at them, to be honest. Like some of my favorite things to do in a gangbang is if there's a guy standing behind jerking off, I'll turn around and yell at him and be like, my elbow and arm is free right here, you know? <laughs> and I'm like yelling at them to fuck random parts of me. So I always think that's like one of the best things. And then um, I think it also just goes along with like, I like to push my limits. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing is to put people in a room where they think they're going to push my limits and then have them be the one that's like, oh my God, I'm dead tired. Right. You know, like it's actually towards, after I've done a few gangbangs, it would actually be hard to book book gangbangs. It was hard to book them for me because a lot of guys would be like, yo, Adriana's like crazy. This is going to be a harder day. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, it's going to be funner, but it's going to be harder because of it to where we would struggle booking talent for them. Because they like can keep up with you. Yes, exactly. That's so funny. I love that. I think I'm like, I think I turn into like a monster. That's why I have the, <laughs> the brat, nats, brat nasty alter ego yeah. because I think in gangbangs and situations like that, brat nasty comes out where she's just like this bratty sex machine that's like, give me the nastiest stuff you can do and do it how I want you to do it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Why do you think that, I mean, you do these gangbangs and you feel so empowered and then you have so many people who who look at this from an outsider's perspective and think that you're, assume that you're being degraded. Why do you think people like default look at it that way? Um, I think because people only see what they want to see, right? Like, like it's the same thing. Like it's the same thing how you look at situations. Mm-hmm. If you look back at a situation in your life, right. And you look back at it from a place of like sadness or anger, you're going to actually see that situation as something being more, more aggressive or something bad versus if you look back at it in, in a happy way, you're going to feel happiness towards that memory. Mm-hmm. So I think like people look at some of the porn that I've done and instead of actually paying attention to my body and the words that I say, they're paying attention to just a person getting demolished mm-hmm. instead of like actually seeing me, Adriana, the actual performer mm-hmm. commanding the room. Um, and I think it's just so outlandish for people. It's something that they couldn't put themselves doing. They can't picture it being that type of way that, um, I don't think they really have the understanding of how freeing it is. I don't think, you know, for them to, for people to go and be naked in public, they think like, oh my God, embarrassment because they've never even allowed their brain to be open up to the idea of, of how that could be empowering or how that could be something that's freeing, you know? Because they don't celebrate their bodies. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I definitely think that people look at everything. We, I think we all do. We look at everything through the lens of our own experience, right? Mm-hmm. So I think people look at you and they, one always places themselves in that position. Mm-hmm. Like could, how, like this is how I would feel if I did it because I carry with me the stigma of sex, whatever shame I experienced around it growing up, whatever totally. I was taught, whatever I was told. And then that's what I bring to my experience viewing this. Mm-hmm. And because I would feel that way, she must feel that way. Totally. And I think people like forget one of the things that I think we as human beings just do in general is that we forget that like other people think and feel differently than we do. Exactly. Everyone's experience is different. Yeah. And I think it's really ironic because uh, some of my biggest fans and the most people that that praise me for my gangbangs are women. Mm. Like I have the most amount of women tell me like, I love this scene. I did this because you did it. I tried something crazy because I saw you do it. Um, so it's really ironic. And then that just goes to show how much more a woman is paying attention to the body language. I think that's a big thing across and sorry, 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 men, mm-hmm. but I don't think they pay enough attention to body language or body signals. Mm hmm. 
if they would, then sex would probably be better with more men to be. Yeah. Honest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, do you think that that's part of like the fact that we just don't as a society, we don't talk about sex and we don't communicate about it and we don't like talk about connecting with people. We just kind of see it and we imitate it. Totally. I also think it's just like for most people, it's an act, mm-hmm. right? Everyone yeah. thinks of sex as an act. Yeah. rather as an emotion, right? So instead of thinking it as like, oh, this is an act we're doing, this is an emotional journey we're going to experience. Um, and I think uh, a lot of people don't read body language. Like I think especially when it comes to men, there's a very real thing about like holding in your emotions. And I think, you know, just the way our society has made men, um, you know, have to be a little more silenced about their feelings has actually cause the problem of building the wall so where they're unable to notice emotion as much. God, that's so true. That's really, that's so interesting. Yeah. I mean, we hold men to the standard of like, you know, you have to be a man, you have to suck in your feelings. You're not supposed to express your emotions. And yeah, I mean, obviously that would create this kind of barrier. Yeah. By doing that, by having them, if you limit your own emotions, you're going to stop seeing other people's emotions, right? Because the way you think carries on to how you see other people. Yeah. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. 